Hello, everybody, and welcome to Moxie Bets, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm Katie Mox. Today, we're talking March Madness NCAA. The Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight are upon us. Some scandals going on in the sports world that have a lot to do with sports betting and MLB futures with my favorite guy, one of my favorite guys, can't say that definitively, Kenny Betts Big. Kenny, how are we doing? Well, you, you can say it pretty definitively. <laughs> um, don't worry, it's just us. No one else is listening. Um, but not, <laughs> I, I'm doing good. Uh, happy to be back on, on here with you. I know the last few times our, the schedules didn't align. So um, I, I honestly, I was like, oh, maybe Kenny's just not that into us uh, yeah. <laughs> anymore. I was like, I keep asking him. He's like, you know what? No, I don't want to go on Moxie Bets. Leave me alone, Mox. <laughs> no, I will say this though. Luckily, I did not come on. Um, I think it was last week they asked me before uh-huh. the tournament started. Um, because Katie, let me tell you, Oh, I can't remember a March Madness going as bad as this one has started for me. And I'm sure we'll get into that later, but yeah. Yeah, the public has been cleaning up. Um, I saw yeah. the juice. They posted something the other day. It was like, I think 70 or 80% of the games with 70% of the bets or more have. Oh, all really? hit. Uh, so the public's been hot. They've been hot. Okay. You know what? Go- good for the public because I feel like the, the house always wins. So good for the public to get some uh, some punches in there. It's, you know, look, it's been madness as we thought it would be some, you know, I was on the right side of some bracket busters and certainly on the wrong side um, of some other ones. And I've, and I've said this pretty much all week. I think that the NC State run is kind of the most fun underdog run um, to root for uh, in this uh, tournament so far. But um, before we get into that, it is time to play ball. Today is officially the first day um, of Major League Baseball. Of course, there was some kind of you know games happening um, in Korea, but this is the first day stateside. And of course, the biggest thing to talk about in MLB outside of opening day is Shohei Otani. We had Alex Monaco on um, last week. We discussed it with him. I certainly want to get your take on this. Now, he right. did speak on Monday. Um, and he reminded me of, of Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton was like, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Because uh, Shohei said, I do not bet on sports. I never have bet on sports. And I don't even know what sports betting is. I mean, he didn't say that exactly. But, you know, summarizing what he said. Do you believe him? No, of course yeah. I don't. No. He looks just like Bill Clinton. He's like, I did not. And it's so convincing. You're like, oh, he didn't. But then. Katie, I was born. I was born at night, not last night. <laughs> um, no, no, I, I don't believe him. Um, just the way the whole story unfolded, you know, I, I feel like we can all make assumptions as to what we think, how this really played out. Uh, definitely seems like his translator who's been, you know, a longtime friend of his, uh, was certainly the fall guy. And what a, you know, what a ride or die that guy is. Well, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he got compensated pretty handsomely if that was the situation. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I don't believe Shohei Otani. Uh, I don't think you, when you're that famous and you're that successful, you usually have a team of people around you, whether it's financial advisors, managers oh. watching your money. Uh, so I, I don't think it's very likely that four and a half million dollars can magically disappear without you having any sort of idea that it's missing. Right. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of holes in the story that I'm not buying. Well, one, yes, I agree with you. There's a team of people, financial advisors for sure. And like it didn't get flagged until the illegal bookie operation got yes. taken down and then he was exposed. That's that's when it was flagged. And the other thing is like we're, you know, we're gamblers, right? And before it was legalized um, in the states that we live in, now people had bookies or you went offshore. But to get a line of credit that would extend $4.5 million and your name's not Shohei Otani, would be extremely difficult with your bookie. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, they're, these guys are not just willy nilly trusting anyone with four, with that, t- with those types <laughs> of figures, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just a measly four and a half mil. Yeah. The, the whole thing kind of smells, um, you know, it's unfortunate because unless, unless the federal investigation, like the, which were the ones who busted the bookmaking operation, unless they come out and say, oh, no, that we have proof of Shohei Otani betting on games or betting on baseball based on where the IP address was of the device making the bets, which I'm sure they could figure all that out yeah. if they really wanted to. Um, we'll probably never know the the true nature of what happened here. But I will say you got to tip your hat to Shohei Otani because in the world that we live in where you see guys like Calvin Ridley and all these NFL yeah. players who are getting busted 
literally placing bets at the team facilities. I mean, at least this guy had the wherewithal to use a, you know, offshore bookie yes. and, yes. you know, yes. try to hide what he's doing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cre credit to him for sure. And also credit to him that he's going to get away with this. I don't think anything is going to happen to him. Like you said, Calvin Ridley suspended for an entire season, um, I believe. And uh, yeah, so that's that. So when you look at this, um, the betting markets, <laughs> funnily enough, um, for the Dodgers. Does this Otani um, scandal impact how you bet the Dodgers at all? Because we have seen when these squeaky clean guys get exposed for something and their reputation is tarnished, sometimes they don't play as well. Does Do you look at the Dodgers a little bit differently here? We look at them, they're the favorite to win the World Series at plus 350, followed by the Braves at plus 550. Is this still the Dodgers to lose? Um, I mean, they're definitely... You know, I, I don't think there's any argument to be made. They're hands down the best team on paper. Yeah. Um, coming into this year, I was already planning on fading them uh, quite a bit just because that's just the nature of what I do, fade the public and, you know, the shiny toys that people like to bet on. Yeah. Um, so I was planning on fading them already uh, to, some de to some degree. And, yeah, this definitely will probably – um, Increase the the amount of times I'll bet against them. Like okay. uh, obviously we're not going to see Otani pitch this year, but like let's say he was pitching, yeah, I would have been fading him almost every time he steps on the mound because, you know, we seem we tend to forget that these guys are like humans at the end of the day. You yeah. know, they're world class athletes. They train really hard, and but they're not robots. They're not artificial intelligence. Um, so you sure, Otani's not. That guy is out of this yeah, world. He, he might be. He, you, you make a good point. He might be. But yeah, these guys are human. So yeah, I'm sure the this whole scandal is weighing on him at home outside of the team facility. Um, we don't know how his teammates are responding to him. Maybe, you know, we've seen guys like Pete Rose, absolute legend of the game. He's blackballed from baseball for the rest of his life for betting. Um, so maybe some of these guys like baseball is a weird sport where they kind of tend to like stick towards like the old guard and, yeah. you know, you hit one of our guys, we're going to hit your guy when he's up to bat. Um, so yeah. And then on the road, right. Like think yeah. about all the heckling he's going to get when, yeah. you know, from the road fans, imagine him in the Bronx or something like that, where he's getting ripped apart by fans. So, uh, right. And that, to your point about the athletes being human, that affects them too. And how they play. And like you said, like both bonds, um, and A-Rod post-scandal were trolled merciless, mercilessly. And even the Astros after the, you know, bang in on the trash can scandal, oh, yeah. people were doing that everywhere that they went. Do you think now, because he uses an interpreter, right? There's, there is a, um, there's kind of a, there's a wall between the public and him, right? Because he uses an interpreter. You don't really get direct access to him because of the language barrier. Do you think that this will, do you think he's tough enough mentally to overcome this? I don't know. Personally, I, don't know him. Yeah, yeah, I've never, I've never talked to Shohei personally, um, <laughs> or even really heard him speak yeah, personally. Yeah, exactly. No. You know, I, I will say he's, you know, all the pressure that was on him coming over to America to play, he's lived up to it, yeah. and I think he's exceeded expectations. You know, based yeah. on what we all thought he was going to be. So, to, in that regards, he, he's handled the pressure and all of that very well. But yeah. yeah, this is a whole different type of animal. This is, you know, I, you know, I know we we have fun betting and betting is fun and, you know, we make money doing it and this and that. But this is like a very serious, um, you know, allegation against him. And if it comes out, he was betting on baseball. Yeah. Imagine imagine that Shohei Otani for everything we expected him to be over the next mm -hmm. five, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years. Imagine that's how it ends because he was betting on baseball. Crazy. Crazy. You, you can't write this stuff. Um, all right. So it's not going to be the Dodgers. Who do you have winning the 2024 World Series? So, uh, again, these are crapshoots. We're we're not even day one into the season, but I'm going to go with the Houston Astros. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I stuck with an AL side because we're avoiding the Dodgers and the Braves. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I think the AL is a little bit weaker uh, as far as the competition is concerned. So uh, I do think the Astros are the top of that AL side. And Year in, year out, we see them in, you know, the ALCS, the World Series, but they're constantly right there. So um, at plus 650, I think, you know, you're still getting pretty good good odds there. And and they'll be right there at the end. Yeah, they're always right there at the end, um, in the last few years at least. All right, let's take a look at season win totals. Dodgers, of course, have the highest one at 103.5, followed by the Braves at 101.5. That, of course, reflects in the odds to who's going to win the World Series. Um, 
are you looking to fade the Dodgers on this 103 and a half based on what you kind of said earlier? Now they have gotten over a hundred last couple of years. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not going to fade the Dodgers on the, on the win total. Um, just because again, long season, you know, it's, their team is structured in a way where they have almost four aces on in the pitching rotation. So it's, they're not like a typical team where, Oh, if the ace goes down, you know, they're, they're taking a big blow. Well, they still got three other aces behind them. They right. got Otani, Freeman, Betts, Max Muncy. They got bats all up and down the lineup. So they're, they're a tough team. I do have some win totals that uh, I'm looking okay. at. Here. Um, I actually gave this one out last year on this show and it hit pretty easily. Uh, okay. The Tampa Bay Rays win total over um, mm-hmm. 84 and a half. Okay. Um, I think, again, even last year, I think it was set at 87 and a half. Yeah. Super low for a team that, again, they just constantly are figuring out ways to get it done. Um, you know, they lose Wander Franco last year, but they have another guy that's stepping up in his position who's supposed to be just as good as Wander Franco. So um, I think the Rays will find a way to get over that. I don't know if they'll start off 20 and 0 or 22 and 0 like they did last year, but we can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> Any other total you're looking at? Yep. So the Cincinnati Reds, they're at 81 and a half. Also going to go over on them. Uh, They're actually a fun team. A lot of young pieces. Obviously, they have Ellie De La Cruz, who's one of the biggest, you know, up and coming names in baseball. Uh, And then they've made a lot of good good acquisitions this year to strengthen the pitching rotation. So I I like what the Reds are doing. And then you look at the other teams in that division, like the Brewers and some, you know, the Cardinals. They're a little bit more on the decline. Um, So I, I think the Reds can easily surpass 81 wins. All right. So let me ask you about who's at the bottom of the barrel here. The athletics 57 and a half <laughs> is their win so total, bad. which, is, which yeah. is like less than half of what the Dodgers are supposed, or, you know, I guess maybe a little bit more half of what the Dodgers are. Do you think that the A's can get 58 wins? Um, it's low. Gonna, 57 and a half. I mean, 57 and a half is, is really low. I actually there was one team similar to the to that it was very similar to this number last year is the Tigers, um, mm-hmm. who they were coming off of historically one of the worst seasons the year prior, and I said I just think teams usually don't you know it's kind of like a like a roller coaster if you're all yeah. the way down here one year you're not going to be up here but you're going to do a little better uh, and I, I think the A's you know they're fighting for a lot obviously they're in the headlines of relocating and you know I just don't think they're going to have the vibes this year last year you had the reverse lockout and people came and they went on that little run for I don't know 10 game or so I don't know that they have that this year I think at this point the fans are like all right see ya yeah, just like get just get out of here already. Just yeah, get it over with. Rip 40, the bandit off. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. so. I mean, I don't know. Fifty seven is low. Uh, maybe I just won't bet it, but I I don't know that I don't know what they have to play for at this point because they're. Well, I mean, you're still you're still out there playing for a contract. You know, these are still professional True. athletes True. who are you know at some at the end of the day they have to have some sort of self respect. Yes. Um, yes. So, yes. so I, if 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 I was a betting man, Katie, I would take the over there on the on the Oakland Athletics. All right, team. let's go A's. Um, all right, so let's talk um, MVP, both NL and AL. Um, first, let's take a look at the American League. Juan Soto, um, one of your favorites, mm-hmm. favorite here at plus 500, that Julio Rodriguez and Aaron Judge, uh, Corey Seager, Bobby Wood Jr., and then Jordan Alvarez. Um, any of those top guys have your eye? Well, the last guy you actually just said, um, really? Jordan Alvarez. So coincidentally, I actually gave him out. At, he was my MVP pick last year. Okay. Um, and he had a really good season, but he had a, he ended up missing quite a bit of games uh, yeah. due to injury. I think if he can stay healthy, uh, I think this Astros team is going to go as far as he takes them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's got the power bat, so he can easily put up those, you know, numbers that kind of jump off the screen with the, you know, highlight real home runs or walk off home runs that uh, we see these guys doing now. But yeah, Jordan Alvarez plus 1200. I think the value is there. I think he's overpriced just because of the injury history. But uh, I think if he can stay healthy, I think he can put together a year that, you know, should have him towards the top of that list. Well, you got to like the value on that, obviously, at 12 to 1. Now, of course, they always say, you know, availability is your best ability. Are you worried at all about his injury history? I mean, you have to be worried about it a little bit. Um, these are bets. Now, when I make these bets, I'm not putting crazy amounts of money on them because, again, their futures were day yeah. one into the season. Um, these are bets I also like to reevaluate halfway through the season. You know, like let's say you were on Alvarez. 
Um, I get him at plus 1200 today, maybe midway through the season, he's leading the front running front runner and his favorite to win the MVP. Well, I'll start, I'll kind of look at, you know, some of the guys who are behind him or having a good season as well. And then I'll kind of start to break up what I would win on Alvarez if he does win it and start to bet some of the other guys and kind of, um, you know, put profit and hedge other ways. Smart. Looking at the National League here, you got Ronald Acuna Jr. at plus 425 as the odds on favorite. Then you got Tatis Jr., I believe is the jersey behind you. Yep. yep, there he is, number 23. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Shohei Otani at plus 950. Um, and then Matt Olson to uh, round out that top group there at plus 1,000. Do you think that Shohei has dropped due to um, the scandal that's going on right now, or do you think that's an accurate place for him? I think it's accurate. I don't think he's dropped um, because of the scandal. But if you look at what's kind of put propelled him the last few years to win the MVP, it was the him Pitching. being able to pitch and hit. Yeah. Um, he's not going to be able to pitch this year. So we're just going strictly off hitting numbers. And then the reason I wouldn't bet any of the Dodgers is just look at that list. You got Freeman, Betts, Otani, three, three of the top names all on the same team. Yeah. Uh, we saw it kind of happened last year with Betts and Freeman where they were kind of, you know, taking votes from one another. So you like self cannibalize kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I would want to, I would say Tatis at plus 700. Okay. Um, but I honestly, I think Acuna has a very good chance to go back to back, um, especially with the new rules that they've implemented the last few seasons with, you know, it's easier for guys to steal bases. We saw Acuna uh, break the record last year for most stolen bases in a season. So if he's able to continue to do things like that on the base paths and, you know, his, his hitting numbers are only getting better year in, year out. He's one of the most elite defenders in the center field or outfield position. Sometimes they move him over to left or right field. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, how do you argue against what Ronald Acuna is doing, right? Yeah. So. Agree. Couldn't agree more. All right. So that's that's enough baseball for me because I'm you know, you know me. It's not my my favorite thing <laughs> to discuss. So let's get into more scandals. Right. That's more at my alley, considering I watch crime TV if I'm not watching sports all the time. So this one is interesting to me, and I definitely want to get your take on it. We've got John Tay Porter, who is the less famous brother of uh, Michael Porter Jr., He's on a two-way contract right now with the Raptors. He's under investigation for some unusual prop bets, some ir uh, irregularities. So on January 26th, he played for four minutes and 24 seconds. He scored no points. He made no three-pointers and only one assist in three rebounds. His prop bets uh, lines for that night, five and a half points, four and a half rebounds, uh, one and a half assists, and made three pointers over one. March 20th, um, he was playing the Raptors, or excuse me, he's on the Raptors. They were playing the Kings. He played, again, two minutes and 43 seconds. Um, he exits the game with an injury. The first one, he said he re-aggravated an eye injury. The second one, he came down with some kind of illness or something. Again, only in the game for a few minutes. And this one, his lines were seven and a half for points, five and a half for rebounds. What's interesting about this, Kenny, is he was not listed on any pregame injury reports for either of those games. And both the Raptors and whoever they were playing had multiple players lifted, listed on their injury reports. And DraftKings actually reported massive losses, wins for the betters, of course, not for them, on Porter in the player prop market for those two games. Majority of betters targeted his unders. ESPN reporting that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet an upward of $10,000 to $20,000 on his prop. This is not a popular guy, okay? This is not someone that you're betting $20,000 on, on his prop. Um, DraftKings also sent out a daily report to users that stated that the number on Porter's three points was the biggest money winner for bettors among all NBA props from that night of games. It's... It's a little stinky. So there's the allegations are and the investigation is, is he purposely getting himself out of games to affect the prop market? What do you think of this? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty far fetched, but it's also like kind of weird. It's kinda um, stinky. I, I think, again, now, you you know this too, Katie. I've been someone I've been on my high horse saying this for a long time. I think all sports are fixed. Um, to all different variable degrees, whether it's the ref, the players, you know, I think a lot of nefarious stuff goes on in these games yeah. that we don't know about. Right. Um, so I think, yeah, now 
this is an interesting one for a few reasons. If I saw a like I've never even seen John T. Porter. I don't even I didn't I didn't even know who the guy was yes. until this story yeah, broke exactly. out. Exactly. So right. So if, why are people betting twenty thousand dollars on him? Well, if if I open up a betting app now. <laughs> It was it was probably what they think he's doing was probably what was happening. But I'm just yeah. saying, right? If you open up a betting app mm -hmm. and you see you're scrolling through the names, John T. Porter, who the fuck is that? Oh, let me take his under, right? Yeah. I don't even know who the hell John T. Porter is. So if I'm scrolling through and I see this guy who's and his lines at five and a half, I couldn't tell you now again, I'm not the biggest NBA better. It's yeah. not something I pay attention to, you know, at every day. But I would think like what I've noticed is usually they don't even offer betting lines for a lot of those type of players. Right. You know what I mean? So like, right. how did that, why did the line, why was the line available? Um, you know, but also like, even if, like you said, you're scrolling through and you're like, I don't know who this person is. I'm going to take the under, <laughs> you don't trust enough to put 10,000, $20,000 on it. That might be a small little bet that you do. And then when you right. think of it, it just happens to be, it's not all John Tay Porter bets that, um, you know, in the entire time that he's played that have this kind of thing. It's just those two games where he happened to have these mysterious illnesses or injuries that popped up that were not necessarily noticeable and weren't on the injury report heading into it. And those were the games where there were 10 and 20. It's like, yeah, I you know, listen, DraftKings, take the L, chalk it up. You lost. You guys win you guys win enough. You know what I mean? Like um <laughs> That's I, why I, we like I, Caesars. Yeah, Caesars is definitely definitely a better option. Yeah. Uh you do get better odds there for sure. Um yeah, I don't know how how this is something again, similar to the Otani thing. How will they ever unless he dimes himself out or they have like leaked text messages or something? how can they ever prove that this guy had anything to do with it? Right. It's just, yeah. um, it's but interesting. He probably, did. He probably called up his boy. Yeah. Like, Hey, uh, I'm going to come down with the stomach flu today, take my points under and, uh, let's cash out. It's some uncut gems. You know yes. what I mean? Like it just feels like insider training. Yeah. I don't, if anything, it just, it throws up a red flag. So the people are, if people are doing that, it probably warns them not to do it more so than anything is going to happen um, to him specifically. Did We're going to get into uh, Sweet 16 gonna, NCAA. Yes. Well, I was going to say, did you see in college, um, like one of the head commissioners for uh, NCAA basketball, he wants to eliminate prop bets altogether for college players. Um, you know, and when you see like betting options like that, you have to think, you know, and obviously these athletes are making a lot of money, even college athletes now, but we're human beings at the end of the day. Sometimes those thoughts creep into our mind, you know, like there's people, there's been humans who have done like evil, evil things to other human beings throughout history. So if there are humans who have a chance to like game the system and make a couple extra bucks, you have to think that it's almost inevitably going to happen. Yeah, I think that like trying not to have prop bets on, I think it's just lame. And like, it's, I don't think, whatever, the commissioner, like I, I would, I think you should be able to bet. Pro I mean, they're just prop bets. But yes, I agree with you that, I mean, if you're already betting on the game, then you're betting on the outcome of what these kids do too. Why can't you bet on what their specific outcome is going to be? But yeah, maybe kids are vulnerable and whatever. I don't know. So we'll yeah. see if that. Um, like yeah. in New Jersey, I can't bet on New Jersey which colleges. Is, which, is, which is stupid. I know it's because they don't want <laughs> kids betting on their own games, but it's like nothing. I mean, I know I bring this up on like every single episode and I'm sure the listeners are like, really? Again, Katie with the Peacocks. But the fact that the people in Jersey couldn't bet on the Peacocks a couple years ago and all that magical run is criminal. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned. All right, we're going to take a quick break here and we come back. Sweet 16 picks with our guy, Kenny Betts Big. Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Welcome back to Moxie Bats, presented by Caesars Sportsbook here with Kenny Betts Big. Let's move on from the drama and let's talk picks. We're not going to do any prop bets on here, uh, you know, to be respectful, I guess, to the commissioner there. But what is a total that you have zeroed in on um, for it? Actually, the Sweet 16 starts tonight, Thursday. Sure. So what, what do you like for us? So we're going to go uh, Illinois versus Iowa State. We're going to go under. It's at 146 and a half on Caesars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the under for a few reasons. 
Uh, one, this is a the out of all the spreads, this is the tightest. Uh, it's pretty much a pick 'em, one point yeah. favorite for Iowa State, uh, depending where you look. But um, Iowa State, very, very, very good defensive team. A lot of their offense <clears throat> comes from being able to force turnovers on the defensive end. Um, then you look at the Illinois offense, right? They're actually one of the most efficient offenses in the country. They don't turn the ball over um, very little, if you know, if at all. So I think if Illinois is able to play their game and you know limit the turnovers and the mistakes, I think Iowa State is going to suffer on the offensive end, which will cause this game to go under. If Iowa State does have their way and their defense gets the better of Illinois and causes turnovers, I think the Illinois offense is going to sputter. Um, Illinois with Terrence Shannon, they like to get out, play fast, you know, push the ball, push the tempo. And if Illinois, if Iowa State, these eyes are, are tongue twisted. <laughs> Midwest <laughs> eyes. <laughs> if, uh, if Iowa State is able to have their way on the defensive end, um, I just think it's going to really stifle, you know, Illinois and what they like to do on the offensive side of the ball. So, again – leans towards the under here. So uh, I'm going to go under on this game. I don't hate this under. Um, I like the Illini to win. I'll get into that um, a little bit later. But yeah, this Iowa State defense has been, you know, the best basically in the country. Uh, you know, obviously Houston, you have to take into consideration there, but they have been suffocating um, their opponents. So I like this. I do like this under, but give me the fight of Illini on the money line for that. Again, get into it in a second. I am looking at, and so we had Alex Monaco on the show last week and he gave this out and I loved it and I looked deeper into it. Now I really, really like it. I'm taking the San Diego State um, Aztecs under their team total in the first half. So now I actually love SDSU and I'm so proud of them. One of my great high school friends has been a coach there for a very long time. So amazing to have back to back, back to back, excuse me, sweet 16 appearances. Um, unfortunately for them, they pulled a crappy card for the Sweet 16 because they got to go against Utah, uh, UConn, who is favored to win the entire thing. The best, you know, front to back team in the nation um, and who beat them last year uh, in the final. Now, you, you look at San Diego State, they're two and five against the spread as an underdog this season. Not great. All five of those um, losses did come as like four points or less. They are catching more points um, in this, so it's kind of tempting to maybe want to take those points. but. What Alex told me and what I really have now zeroed in on is UConn in the first half has come out with a crazy defensive intensity. They held both Stetson and Northwestern to under 20 points in the first half in the first two games of the tournament. Northwestern, their total was 25 and a half. They were held to like 19. You're going to give me the Aztecs at 29 and a half in the first half. No way, dude. Give me I'm giving the under this defense is too good. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny you say that because I actually bet Northwestern against UConn mm. and I was watching that game like Northwestern would, they would beat the defense. They would have an open layup and UConn would come back and just block, block the layup. It's, right. Yeah. UConn is really, yes. really, and I, I'm not like going out on the limb here, obviously, but they're really, really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and to echo what you said, I was watching that game the first half and I was just like, Man, the the intensity on defense. Yeah. I've never. Yeah. There's no other college team that plays defense like. Once that. they it's get insane. out to a, a, a good lead, they let up on it a little bit in the second half. But in the first half, they are nasty. Yeah, like uh, Northwestern couldn't do anything, like nothing, and they have their own seven footers. I I was watching that game thinking because I have uh, future bets on other schools to win the March Madness tournament, uh, and I was watching this thing and. There's no one's beating UConn. They're, they're oh, hands down no, the best. That's, I feel like so lame because I'm always like chalk, 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 UConn, UConn, UConn. But like I don't know who yeah. I don't know who beats them um, either. All right, so let's talk about a spread that you like. Look, I'm gonna go. We're both taking North Carolina or yeah, North Carolina teams. I'm taking NC State plus okay. the six and a half. And this is mostly Kenny just on vibes. You got to root for one underdog. And this year, my Peacocks are the Wolfpack. And you look at Marquette and they've got more depth, right? They shoot the three point shots a lot better. They're four and one straight up in the postseason, but they're only two and two against the spread. And NC State's offense has been electric 82 points on average in the last five games. When I look at how much Marquette has been averaging over that span, it's 78. I know that Marquette's the better team, but give me the six and a half. I mean, how do you argue that? Come right? on. It's all vibes. On. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, we're when you're this far into March, like 
throw throw the stats out the window because yeah, have really, fun. It's really all about the vibes, you know. Like yep. you could have been analytic to death a couple of years ago talking about how the Peacocks were not going to make a run. Yeah, and they just said, yeah, shove it up, and uh, we're yeah. going to go on a run. So yeah, you know, you never know when you're hot, you're hot, and when it's March. Uh, and look, look how far San Diego State got last year. Nobody thought they were getting all the way to the final. So. Right. I have adopted NC State as my Cinderella team. So I'm just, I'm going to keep riding the wave until the wheels fall off. Okay, but you so like UNC. Yeah, you're going with little brother. I'm going with big brother. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take- Big being tar- experienced brother. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to go with the Tar Heels, North Carolina. Um, minus four. Some spots have four and a half, depending where you look. Um, but I, I like it up to five, honestly, six. Um this is again just a, the style this really favors north carolina one alabama they've done a little bit better the last two games but they play all year they've played zero defense um so the last thing you want to see is a north carolina team that can beat you all different types of way on offense they can push the tempo they can slow it down and play a half court game and then you look at alabama they foul a lot a lot a lot a lot they send the other team to the free throw line a ton north carolina is one of the top teams in the country at scoring from the free throw line so uh just has a recipe for disaster written all over it for this game so i i think north carolina wins it going away um and you'll hear on my next one that this one might be a little biased though. Well, here's the thing. I like UNC to win the region. I like them to make the final four. You look, we both said that UConn, nobody's beating them, but you found some value on UNC at 12 to one to win the entire tournament. Now, why do you think they have a shot at beating UConn? Well, I've been betting North Carolina throughout the season. Um, so I've, I actually have You're them very like well plus 2,400 plus 2,200. Um, I bet them before the tournament started again, they were like plus 1,900. So I have a, I, I'm going to have a very good, 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 good uh, year if North Carolina wins this thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the amount uh, of goods you just rolled off your tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very yeah, good, yeah. good, good, good year. <laughs> exactly. You know, I had to get one more in there. Um, yeah. Listen, obviously, UConn definitely looks like the best team. I, you know, you've said it, I said it, every yeah. a- basketball analyst says it. They just look like the I best mean, team, yeah. right? When they play their game, it looks like they're tough to beat. But this is March. We just said anything can happen in March. Uh, you don't normally want to bet the chalk. So at plus 1,200, I still think you're getting great value on North Carolina, who they have veteran players in Baycott and um, – RJ Davis, they have Elliot Cadeau, five star uh, freshman. So they have pieces. Obviously, they're in North Carolina. They get really good players too. And if it comes down to them versus UConn in the final four on any given day, I think UNC can definitely beat a UConn team. So, okay. yeah, I, I like UNC. They've been my pick for the entire year, and I'm not going to get off now because they look great. Yeah, go Tar Heels, uh, unless NC State somehow. <laughs> gets there again and knocks off you and see hey we've seen stranger things happen all right the time has come for mox locks what's the number one thing you are absolutely taking to the window today you're taking us to the diamond to uh major league baseball opening day i like it yeah. i mean it would have been wrong if i didn't give you a baseball it's my That's best true. sport uh i was very excited to give you the mets because the mets were about to start off one and oh have a better winning percentage than the dodgers and Of course, Mother Nature struck and she canceled that game. So I couldn't give you the Mets. Uh, But we're going to go San Diego Padres. Uh, They've already played two games. Um, I think we're going to see that if they continue to do this, I think we'll see a trend develop where these teams who have already played some of these games, I think they're going to have a little bit of an advantage coming into this game, right? Like the Padres have already played two games. The Giants haven't played a game yet in the regular season. So a little bit of the jitters out. I think the Padres coming into it, Um, people are down on their team because of how bad they were last year, but they still have Machado. They still have the guy behind me, Tatis Jr. Um, you know, they lose Snell, but they made some pickups, but, uh, I think they'll get the win tonight at minus 110, jump aboard and, uh, meet me at the window. I was high on the Padres, uh, last year, uh, getting, getting far in the playoffs, uh, didn't exactly happen the way that I thought it was going to, but you know, it's that's what futures are. You take a, you take a stab at something that you have no idea how it's going to turn out. Um, I'm going back to that Illinois, Iowa state game, the, uh, the Midwest eyes, if you will. And I'm taking Illinois money line. One, my father is an alumnus uh, of the fighting Illini. I like that. It's at even money here because when I look at this fighting Illini team, they have come into this matchup probably as the hottest team in all of college basketball. They've won nine of their last 10, including five straight games. And yes, 
like we said, this Cyclones defense is crazy. It's been so hard for teams to get past them. They are absolutely suffocating. Did you know that they haven't allowed more than 65 points in 10 straight games? That's how good this, and by the way, that plays into your under very, very well for this team. And we like that. But I don't think there's anything more dangerous in this tournament than Terrence Shannon. He's got some questionable things happen off of the court. But on the court, this guy has been crazy. He averaged about 23 points per game. But we saw him drop 40 points in the Big Ten tournament. He dropped 30 versus Duquesne. So hopefully, one, that the Illini win the money line. That's what I'm taking to the window. But hopefully, the good defense and the powerful offense even themselves out so that you can hit your under as well. Yep. Add a parlay. Illinois in the under. Yeah, so, let's do it. That's that. That'll be the uh, Moxie bets big parlay. We are it. doing Illinois money line and the under in that game. Kenny, so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us all this insight on baseball. You know, it's not my strongest, so I appreciate when you come on <laughs> and tell the people what to bet. You can follow Kenny on social at Kenny bets big. And by the way, shout out to Santi underscore fresh sports picks it's a lot going on there but he is leading the bracket challenge the moxie bets bracket challenge through the round of 32 so congrats to you if you hang on you get a spot here and if anybody passes him you get a spot as well this has been moxie bets presented by caesar sportsbook don't forget to follow us on social and we'll see you next time